Hello and welcome to the 27th part of this programming series on tutorial videos for C. In this video we're going to take a look at the third and last operator for bit operations and it's called the bitwise complement operator or not operator depending on which way you prefer. I prefer complement. And we're going to use it to actually do the opposite of what we did in the previous video with the OR operator and we're going to use it to turn on switches rather than sorry turn off switches rather than turn them on. So let's look at how we do this and it's very simple. We have our machine status and let's say we'll take our starting machine status with switch C off and we need to somehow with the status of this machine I want to turn off switch A. So at the moment we know that switch A is represented by the fourth bit, the bit worth 8 And there's an operator called the bitwise complement, which is represented by a tilde. And what this does is this flips the bits, so you get a 0, 1, 1, 1 in this way. And what you can see now is, hopefully, if we and our state as a machine with this, then we'll end up with, we'll be anding, let's first of all put this underneath so it's a little bit more clear. So we've got status of machine. Now let's look at what we might get if we and these two together. Well here we'll get a 0, here we'll get a 1, here we'll get a 0, and here we'll get a 1. And you can see that now the status of the machine when it's been anded with the bitwise complement of switch A has now lost this bit here. So switch A is effectively being turned off. And it's as simple as that. Now, before I carry on and print something out to the screen, any of you who are actually more familiar or understand about how numbering systems work on computers will be screaming at the screen now saying, it's wrong what I've said, there's another gotcha in this, but I'm going to come to that at the end of the video. But for the moment, the take home is simply that we use the bitwise complement to flip the bits and then and, and we can turn our specified bit to zero. So just to show this in, in action, if I take status of machine and say equals status of machine and it with, I'll put a bracket around this because I like doing it. So I'm always scared of operator precedence even when I think I know what it should be. And let's also take out switch D in this way. So we've printed the status, we're taking out switch A and taking out switch D. I'll compile the program and run and now you can see that they're all, oh, says they're all on to start with. Why is that? They shouldn't be. I should have taken switch C out. Should be a value of 13, sorry. I'll just compile and run that again. Okay, so we've got on, on, off, on. And then A has gone off. And now D has gone off, as expected. So that's worked. Now let's have a quick look at something else. Let's print the value of switch A to the screen as a decimal, as a signed integer, a D, not percentage u which would be an unsigned integer and now let's take the bitwise complement and also print that to the screen and put a new line afterwards and now let's have a look at what we might expect here we would expect a to be a value of 8 and the complement we would say we would expect to be a value of 7 because we've got bit for 4, bit for 2, and bit for 1 here set added together makes 7. Let's compile and run this program. And we see that we've got 8, but here we've got minus 9 as the value of switch A. And you might be wondering how that comes about. Well, I'm not going to specifically count off bits to show how minus 9 comes about, but what I am going to do is explain a little bit about where this is coming from. We have an integer type here, and the integer type has, depending on the numbering system, on the computer, but normally 31 bits available. The unsigned would have the 32. And that means our number here for check switch A isn't 1000. It's actually a lot of other zeros and 1000 with all of these to totaling 31 bits. Which means when we flip those bits, we actually end up with this number. And in the world of signed integers, we also flip the sign and end up with a negative number. And we end up with what's called a 2's complement negative number. 
And I'd recommend, because I'm not going to explain it anywhere in this series, that if you're interested in it, then go to Wikipedia. And then I found an article on Two's Compliment, which is really good at explaining exactly how this works and has a, a good little table here where you can understand how you've ended up with the minus nine. But suffice to say, and the take home from here that's important is for projects when you're dealing with bits in this way, is that all of the bits get flipped in your number, not just the ones you think you're interested in, because the computer flips, according to this tilde, this complement operator, all of the bits. So at first that appears a little bit shocking and, and worrying, but it's not as bad as it sounds, because, for example, in a project that we did a year or so ago for a company involving a large machine which had a huge amount of information coming out, you could say that we were wanting to read out from there, we were wanting to read out the position of a drum. And the position of this drum, if you imagine a stream of bits coming out, existed inside the first eight bits, five, six, seven, eight, like this. So all we would do is, the, well, the informa but the information that came out of the machine came out maybe in some kind of format like like this or something like that. So we got lots of other information as well inside here. And we wanted to deal first and foremost only with this section here. So the normal procedure is actually to make yourself what's called a mask, where only the bits that you're interested in, so the area you're interested in, are set to 1, and you would call that a mask. And let's say this is called info. And then you would simply do an operation as first in your program, doing the info bitwise and with the mask, and this leaves you then purely with, well, let's say the info had this in, and you can already see from the work we've already been doing that the result of this would leave us with this by adding these two together and all the rest zero. And then we can do any flipping we want or any kind of not or more and operations with just our bit because we know that we've reset all of the bits on the rest of the number and we're working purely with the information that we want. So, like I said, careful with this operator, it flips all the bits, and when you're working in this way with bits, then it's a very good idea usually to have something kind of mask, called a mask, which contains, which is used in a, with an AND operator first and foremost to isolate the bits that you want to work with in the information stream. And an example of this also is in the chess programming series I'm doing on the other playlist where we've started clearing and setting bits on a 64-bit unsigned number representing pawn positions on the chessboard exactly using these operators in this way. Okay, I hope that made some kind of sense. Thanks very much for listening. The next video will move on to shifting bits. Till next time, comments, questions, criticisms, welcome as always on YouTube.